Hello everyone, this is Mumbo here, welcome back, and today we are back on the Hermitcraft server. It is episode 61, and of course I am very happy to see you. In fact, I am generally very excited for this episode, I don't know why. I'm just really, really, really enjoying playing Minecraft at the minute. As you may have noticed, the number of videos that I am uploading has increased, and the amount of time that I am spending on these episodes has also increased. And may I just say a massive thank you for the amount of support that we have been receiving on these Hermitcraft episodes. At the time of recording, the latest episode of Hermitcraft that released before this one has got over 5,000 likes and 50,000 views within the first day of release. That is awesome by any standards. But anyway, what are we going to be doing in today's episode? Well, to start things off, to get the ball rolling, we are going to be doing a little bit of redstone work. We are going to be creating an automatic anvil replacement system over here. It's going to be controlled by button presses, so it's not fully automatic, but I think it could work pretty well because a lot of people were commenting, whoa, how can you have an enchanting setup without actually having anvils? And I hadn't, for some reason, thought of this. So that is what we are going to be doing. I'm going to hop into a testing world, come up with a few ideas, I'll give you a show round, and then we'll get to work. So here is my official building world. This is where I spend my alone time, where I come up with all my ideas, build up the contraptions, do all of the testing and all those bits and bobs. And you may look around and notice a few builds. For example, we have got that, um, oh, what was that? That was the silverfish farm over there. And then we've got the giant sand door, the tree farm over there. I believe that is a vault door, the stairway to heaven, another vault door. I mean, really, there is plenty to look at in this world, but we're not going to be doing that in today's episode because down here this tiny little contraption that I've got is actually our anvil replacement system. I'm fairly surprised at how small it really is but anyway if we take a look if this anvil were to be broken then we would just hit this button and you can see we get a replacement almost straight away. It's a very quick acting mechanism and also as you can see it really is very easy to build. So what I'm going to do is hop back onto the Hermitcraft server, gather up my resources, and then we will construct this little fella in the enchanting room. I just thought I would quickly show anyone who is wondering how I'm going to go about building this in survival. So over here we have got both of our buttons and this one is actually linked up. Now I have used quite a lot of resources in this one but it's just to keep it nice and compact because over here we have got the ravine and I don't want to be falling into there. But yes we are going to run this repeater into a block. It has been inverted by this torch so as you can see when we hit this button it will then turn off. And then over here we will just have a piece of redstone dust, a block, and then a redstone torch on the top here. Not to up like that, but on the top of this block. And what that will do is it will create a bud between this piston, so that it will only, only retract when this is off and this is off. And because torches take one tick to turn on, that is why we get that very quick retraction and then extension. But anyway, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to quickly... Plonk down all of these bookshelves and then I will place all of the anvils up top. In fact, you know what? I can do that right now. I'll give it a very, very quick tester with this one. Let's see if it all works. Just hit this button and it falls down and goes into space. Lovely. Space? What even is that? I have had to make a bit of a compromise in the fact that I can't have a roof that is level with this because otherwise the anvil sort of flies out and it doesn't quite work properly but as you can see when we hit this button we get ourselves an anvil and on this side as well we get ourselves an anvil so we have got a double anvil replacement system and I have to admit I really do like it but now we're going to be moving on to something else hopefully if all goes to plan, it will be a little collaboration with another hermit because I know, I know I have been fairly antisocial on the server, so I'm going to hop onto Skype and get in contact. So what are we doing over here anyway? Um, we are well, at the cow farm, yeah, pretty we're, much. Yeah, we're going to be doing the cow farm, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So I saw in your video that you need leather. Yep. And leather leather's a bit of a pain to get because you can only get it from cows, right? I mean... Maybe in 1.8 there's going to be trading with villagers, but cows is the way you get it. And so this is what I came up with like ages ago. It's It looks like a standard cow farm, right? It looks like I've put it together, it's a bit wacky, it's got iron bars above it. <laughs> yeah, you've got like uh, a spiralling sort of thing going on here. Exactly. There's more than meets the eye here because you've got the water pushing these guys around in a circle. And there's a good reason for that. Um, if you come over to this corner, right. there is a little stone hole down here. <laughs> Just heading down. 
Oh, yeah, this pretty. is kind of an afterthought. <laughs> so you can stand here, and you know the old trick where you put like a weight on your keyboard to hold down a key? Ah, oh, yes. So you can do that, and you can get it to uh, hold down the wheat. So you fill up your inventory with items, and then you've got wheat on your hot bar. At the moment, I've only got hay bales, um, but then that's going to breed the cows. And so this little machine right here, if we just... Is there a lever somewhere? There it is. Yep. <laughs> okay, that's powering that block. I don't know why that starts it. There's obviously redstone under there. Yeah. So then that's going to activate this dropper. It's going to fire out some wheat. In fact, I'll uncraft this so we can see uh, that in action. And there we go. So I okay. assume, yeah, you'd be standing there. You'd be filling up your inventory. And then as you use the wheat on the uh, cows, this would be sort of running through. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. And so when there's when there's cows that can't breed, um, the wheat is going to go into the dropper and get fed back in again. Yep. So it doesn't despawn. Yep, now one good. thing that I've observed and I like recorded myself doing this and sped up the footage is that it takes about five minutes for the cows to get all the way around because they're constantly breeding. And I did I did like a little test. I stopped breeding. I came up here, watched them go around, started breeding them again. It seems like. For the cow there to get all the way around this track, it takes it about five minutes. So okay. it, it's quite efficient, and yeah. there's quite a few cows here. So whenever you've got a little bit of time to do some AFK, and if you come over here, just sit down there, set up that key with the weight on it, and just you know get loads of loads of hay. Yeah, <laughs> loads called. of wheat. Yeah, wheat. That's what it's uh, called. Leather, leather. That's what leather. we need. Yeah, you need leather. You need the wheat to get the leather. <laughs> yep. Yeah, so yeah, there's just tons of things that we need to do, and then hopefully. The idea is is that we'll end up with leather. Yeah, you and you want to start with a wheat farm, which means then you've got to go and build a bone bone meal farm. This is this is a lot more complicated than I thought it would be. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's tons of farms that we need to get to this point. But yeah. when you do, you can end up with lots of leather. It it seems exactly. a bit crazy, doesn't it? That it does. You need all this stuff to get leather in large amounts. But this is a really cool design. And I'm assuming that you have got a video of this idea on your channel. In fact, I think I remember seeing it. I have got I've got a tutorial called the Mass Animal Breeder. That's basically one of these compacted, you know, easy to follow friendly tutorial. And then also on Hermitcraft I've like gone through the process of figuring out how to do this, you know. Right now um, hopefully I will remember to put links to both of those in the description. I'm pretty notoriously bad at doing that, but I've got like a notepad <laughs> if, next to me Mumbo that I'm forgets, now If Mumbo forgets spam him in the comments. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Please do. Just for the good of Exuma spam me because I've got a little notebook next to me that I'm now using to like take notes of dude. links that I've mentioned because I just keep forgetting them dude notes lists ideas write them all down that's the best way to do things ever you have an idea write it down that I've got it all on my phone but now I'm doing it pen and paper style doing it old school because Go going, going back to the past yeah doing it old school <laughs> gonna have a blackboard soon who knows <laughs> <laughs> yeah blackboard and chalk uh, so um, yeah the one thing I haven't mentioned is obviously like uh, when when you breed the animals, they're going to get separated, right? Yeah. And then all the babies are going to end up over here. So then you can grab your looting sword, throw a little potion at them, kill them all at once, and all the items go into that chest for you. Well, that's perfect. That's it's exactly awesome. what I need. So hopefully I'll be able to get myself tons of leather. And yes, tons I of... think I think in the next episode of your your Hermitcraft series, I want to see a chest full of leather. <laughs> really? Oh, well, that I'll, I'll give it a go. I will, you can do it. You can I do will it. Rise to that challenge and see what Absolutely. I can do. I can't promise anything, but I will see what I can do there. Awesome. I reckon you can do it. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for joining me today. Um, I'm glad that no you problem. came along because I've been sort of hermited away, not really speaking to many of the hermits in videos anymore. I think so, I think the problem with Hermitcraft is we are all kind of actually hermits. <laughs> yeah, we, we sort of do our own thing, and our own thing is good, but we need to interact and do our Absolutely. own thing together, I guess. Absolutely. Do our own things together. Yeah. Sounds good. Sounds like a plan. Right, well, thanks for coming along, and uh, I'll see you sometime in the near future. No problem, I'll see you soon. So I hope that you enjoyed that little segment there. Just to let you know, since the last cut, I have done something. Yes, it is a bit of a shame, but I have deactivated the mob spawner. Basically, I took a look up there, and it turns out it has gone really out of sync. All of the buckets of water are a little bit whack. Some of them are dispensing and some of them aren't. And also, it turns out, yes, the mob spawner is the thing that has been causing my massive lag spikes that I get 
when traveling in between my two bases. So now I have deactivated that. It's a sad day. It's been on since episode 3 of Hermitcraft and it seems a shame to turn it off but I will eventually end up fixing that once the lag problem has been fixed but anyway we're not going to be dwelling on that much longer because it will bring a tear to the eye we're going to be moving on to something else I am currently over at Biffa's base and I am also standing on top of a skeleton spawner now you may be wondering what on earth am I going to do with this well here's the thing now that our mob spawner is out of action, we have a ton of bones. That is good. We've got tons of bones backed up. But I use quite a lot of bone meal in the tree farm and all of the other stuff. And I don't like to use my resources if I don't have a way of refilling them. What I'm trying to say here is now that the mob spawner is out of action, we don't have any way to refill our bones unless we're going to go out in the night and kill tons of skeletons, which I don't want to be doing. So what I'm going to do is create some form of bone farm. Now the best way to do this is to mine out the area around this mob spawner and just dig out the whole area underneath it and create an 8x8 area of hoppers. I think that is what I'm going to do because it is really efficient. You can just stand there AFK and gather up tons of bones without worrying about loads of skeletons backing up. We don't have to worry about XP because we've got the enderman farm so I think that will be the best way to go about it. So what I'm going to do is do a quick third person time lapse of me mining out the entire area. Should be quite interesting so let's begin. In. As I was midway through building, I suddenly made a bit of a realisation, and that is the fact that I haven't actually created any form of bone farm since, since, like, pre-full release of Minecraft, since before XP was introduced, because I never really had a reason to have one. And for that reason, my designs are just a little bit dated, okay? And that one was no exception. In my head, that was going to be super efficient, and absolutely perfect for what we needed, but what I hadn't taken into account was the fact that skeletons now actually wear armor, and that means that they can get away with falling 24 blocks, and it, it just, it wouldn't work. It really would not work as a farm design. So instead, what we are doing right now is we are creating a lava blade so that when the uh, skeletons fall down, they will fall into the water stream and be transported along, and then pushed into the lava blade in which they will be set on fire. We can gather up all of their drops and cart them along into a chest, put them somewhere useful, and it should work fairly well. So what I'm going to do is crack on with this and then I will catch you guys in a little bit. The lava is in place and some of the water has been removed, not because that is an important part of the design that is going to be added in later, just walking along trying to place hoppers whilst floating in water trying not to jump really is quite difficult and it's something that I don't want to try out too often because the chances are I will die. But the next thing that we have to do now is we have to run all the way back to my base and pick up a bunch of hoppers so that we can run them in a line like this into a chest. I will give it a quick tester and then I will put in the item elevator ready for the full build. Here comes the moment of truth. We are just in the process 
of removing a bunch of the torches here. I've done all of the ones around the spawner, and it's still a little bit light in this room. I thought I would have given it enough space, but it turns out that it is still pretty bright, and there's a lot of lights coming out from this area here. Maybe we should remove a few of the torches on the inside here, but there is also light coming down from the top, and I don't know where this torch actually is, because it's not down here. Is it? It's up here? Nope. There's lava there. Um, but it does seem to be flooding in a little bit, doesn't it? How about we just block up this whole area? That might be a better way of doing it. So just block all of this off. That way, we can guarantee that none of the light flooding in is actually from torches. Oh, there's a skylight! There we go! Oh, how stupid am I? Oh, on a scale of one to stupid, that was stupid. Right, anyway, we will now take out our precarious little bridge here. We have achieved optimum darkness in the spawning area. And now we will just let the skeleton spawn and see if any of the drops go down into our chest. I believe this is my little pillar down thing. I don't want to land in lava here. So we'll just be very careful around here. But here is our chest. And as you can see, already a bunch of bones have gone in here. So it does look like it is working, which is brilliant news. This little slice of redstone that you can see here has taken a disproportionate amount of time. Oh, it's making my head hurt just thinking about this. This is like a hellish area to be working in because every block that you break seems to have water or lava above it, which either way is pretty bad because obviously the water just flows in and completely destroys everything that you've done. But I am going to try my best to explain what is going on here. So what we have down at the bottom is we have got this hopper line. This is where all of the items picked up. It's fairly self-explanatory. Look, you should see them flowing through these hoppers right now. That's easy. I can understand that. You can probably understand that. That's all good. Then what we have down here is we have a little sorting system that will quite simply pull out all of the arrows from the system because I don't need arrows. I don't want them and it will take those out and then those arrows will be fed into this dropper system that will just drop them off into the area around them. They will despawn within five minutes. The maximum number of arrows I've ever had at one time using this system was about 50. So it's not going to be too bad for the game. So do not worry about that. So that is, that's all good. And then over in this area here, we have got our item elevator that you just heard go off. And this is going to transport all of our bones upwards into a chest that you can see at the top there. And in fact, we are done with the redstone down there. So I am going to hop on up. We should never, never have to look at that again if everything has gone well. But we will then have a bunch of items up in this chest. Now the reason that these arrows are in here, they're not meant to be, is because I had it running before. Before I actually got that item sorter in. But yes, this seems to all be working well. And, ah, oh, ah, oh, I don't even know what to say. I don't know why doing all that redstone took so long. But you know how it is in survival mode. Building with redstone is just ten times harder. But there we go. I have been up here for literally around about two or three minutes. And as you can see, we are gathering up bones very nice and quickly. So that is all absolutely brilliant. Now, if anyone is wondering, yes, I am going to be decorating this area, but not in today's episode, unfortunately, because we have run out of time. Yes, I know this video has been a little bit shorter than usual, and that is because I'm about to leave the house and go and take a look at the illusionist Darren Brown. I don't know if any of you have ever heard of him. He might not be so big in other countries, but in England, he is a very famous celebrity illusionist. You know, one of those. So I'm really excited to go and see his show just because I'm going to get a first hand glimpse at all of the crazy stuff that he does. Hopefully, I will come back completely mind blown and won't be able to sleep tonight. So I am very, very excited about that. If any of you have seen Darren Brown before, then please let me know in the comment section because I would love to hear your experiences. But anyway, if you did enjoy this video, please be sure to hit that like button. And if you really loved it, then make sure to subscribe. But thanks for watching, guys. This has been Mumbo, and I'm out. I'll see you later.